guys welcome back to my channel so first before I do anything else I want to thank you guys so much for um, the outreach that I got from the newbie book tag it was absolutely amazing and it's honestly the reason why I'm doing this channel so I just felt I feel so grateful for the comments and um, and any and the subscribers I just I can't tell you how much it means to me it's it's amazing. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, today I'm going to be doing a different tag because it got me really excited to do tags. And this one's called the this or that tag. And it's actually based off a blog. I know somebody else has done a this or that tag on YouTube, but it's not the, it's not the tag with the same questions I'm doing today. So I'm going to tag the blog that I got it from instead of that YouTube video. So without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> So the this or that tag that I'm doing is uh, is it actually a blog. It's from Paper Fury and it was by CG. Don't know who that is, but basically it asks a series of questions and that I have to decide in between which one. And it's got a lot of really interesting questions and I picked this one because I like the questions a little bit better. Um, so let's start. Number one, series or standalone? This one's actually kind of easy for me. I would pick standalone any day. I like series if they're duologies or trilogies, but I don't like series that just never end and feel like the more the series goes on, the more you lose touch with the characters and the, the plot lines. Because I feel like that happens a lot, kind of like the second ser second season of a TV show. The longer you go with the series, it just gets more and more watered down. At least with the ones that I feel like I've read. I mean, it's the reason why I haven't finished the Shatter Me trilogy. It's the reason why I got frustrated after like all of the click books that I mentioned before. Um, the, oh, oh, a great one is the Mart series, the House of Night series. That one is a perfect example because I love the first few books and then I hated the rest of them. So I feel like series just go on and on and on and usually it's not with content that I'm really excited about so I just get really frustrated or with standalones it's all tied up in a pretty little bow and then it's all done and sometimes there can be better like plot development character development because they know they only have one book um and I hate it when they make another book after the first one as kind of like an afterthought it's like oh well I could continue this that drives me nuts because usually it does that exactly what I don't want it to do, which is lengthen a story which has already been told and finished and sometimes finished beautifully. It's like, it's like with the Night Circus. I loved the Night Circus for everything that it was. It finished everything up beautifully. The character development was there. The plot lines were there. It was just, it was fantastic writing and it's done. So I could finish the book with just a sigh of relief of like, okay, that was great reading. <laughs> So definitely standalone, but I do, of course, still love certain series because that's, who doesn't? <laughs> the second one is Magic Born or Magic Earned. I'm a Magic Born all the way kind of gal. Like I love Sailor Moon. I love Harry Potter. I love Mia Thermopolis. I love Kel from The Darker Shade of Magic. Like I love Magic Born characters. And I think it's because of that like chosen one thing. Like I also love Buffy and Charmed. And of course they were all born with magic or with some type of supernatural gift. I do think that the Magic Earned has a huge, huge, um, it, it develops a character a lot more like responsibly I do feel but I'm always gonna be a sucker for you know you're the chosen one like that just always gets me yeah, I love magic born I just feel like there's something just a little extra special and it makes me feel like we could all kind of be born with that kind of ability um and that it's just kind of residing in us all the time I think that's why I like it so much because magic earned I feel is usually you have to do something to like take it or or have it but with magic born it was always there and you just kind of like fuel the fire and I just find that really um, attainable the next one is enemies to lovers or friends to lovers well <laughs> these both have great great things to them definitely said that a little slow and dramatically I have to choose friends to lovers though, especially since I just finished Josh and Hazel's guide, guide to not dating. 
that book was amazing. Um, I love, love, love uh, Friends to Lovers. I just find it more special. I find that you get the character development a lot more because you're learning more about them and they're sharing things with each other and you have more of a relationship that's like gradually there. What I don't like with Friends to Lovers, <laughs> I don't like it when they have been friends forever. There's no reason they're not dating. They are both single. They just have never thought we should date and they like each other. I hate that. So that is one thing that's a huge drawback in Friends to Lovers, but if it is done right, it is my favorite. Enemies to Lovers is good, but I just, I don't think you get a lot more, I don't think you get as much, I hate to say it again, but development with the characters because it's so much focused on how much they don't like each other that it's not focused on why or who they are. And usually it's something dumb and then it keeps them together for way too long. So definitely, definitely Friends to Lovers. Hilarious banter or emotional ruin? Um, hilarious banter. I like them both. I like a little bit of angst, but not a ton. And the emotional ruin tends to be a little overly dramatic for me. So I'm definitely going to pick hilarious banter. You can just do a lot more with it. And I like it when I can laugh while I'm reading instead of cry. Love triangle or insta love. I love love triangles about as much as I love a lightning bolt to my skull. So not a lot. Definitely insta love. Don't love insta love. Hate it too. But um, if I'm going to choose between the two things I dislike the most, I'm never going to pick love triangles. I would have to be, oh, you'd have to torture me for me to pick that. It's just, no, 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 no. I don't like it. I think that they use them way too much. They use them as a reason, as the only reason to keep characters apart. And that drives me insane. Where when you have insta love, I mean, at least they're together. And I know it's like a small, small thing, but it's like, I don't know what else to want. So definitely insta love over that crap of a love triangle. Keyboard smash fantasy names or names that all start with the same letter. <laughs> names that all start with the same letter. I hate to say that, but I get really mad at myself if I can't pronounce a name in the book and I feel bad about it for like a week and a half, way more than I should. But I mean, what else are you gonna do? So definitely names all start with the same letter because I just can't, I can't live with that kind of frustration. It's like when I read, um, oh, I started reading The Fellowship of the Rings and the word 11 T came up and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what it was numbers wise. I couldn't figure it out in my head. I was so, so mad at myself that I had to shut the book and like berate myself for half an hour. So yeah, names all start with the same letter. I'd rather have like 50 Sam, Sarah, Sherry's, Sabrina's. <laughs> I already said Sam. Wow, that'd be a hard book to write. Mean parents or dead parents? Happy alive parents. All right, that can't happen all the time in books. So uh, definitely mean parents. I feel like they add a lot more to the plot. I feel like they make me like the, the children a lot more. Like in Pretty Little Liars, perfect example, hated all the girls until I realized that their parents were crap. And then I'm like, oh, well, what else are they supposed to do? Their parents suck. And um, both in the TV show and in the books. They're better in the, the TV show, but they are terrible in the books. So I think it adds a lot more to, again, development, say it all with me, when you've got um, mean parents. But I do, I, I can understand the dead parent trope, you've, or trope. You've got a lot more of the, um, you know, they're on their own, they're figuring their lives out. There's always some kind of mystery from their parents. So you do have a lot more going on in there as well. But I just find mean parents personally a little more entertaining. Or you could have the CW, like WB, like parents that it's like, oh, I just got a job in Alaska. So I have to go. But honey, I know you're in middle school. You can stay. We'll rent out an apartment and you can have whatever parties you want to throw. Supermodel looks or the plain Jane who's constantly envied by like everybody. Um, definitely plain Jane. Don't like either of them again, but I feel like it's at least a little more relatable to have a plain Jane who doesn't feel beautiful versus a supermodel who's like, I'm great. Um, I just don't see a lot of girls, especially in high school or middle school, walking around like that. They could be, hopefully they are because of course every girl is beautiful, but I feel like it's at least a little more relatable to have the plain Jane who everybody just thinks is gorgeous because the truth is... Anyone who suffers with self-esteem issues or confidence issues, you walk around not feeling beautiful. 
whether it is true or not and you never know what somebody else is thinking you could think oh my god i look terrible and the person across the hall from you could be going like look that eyeliner it is on point so i'm going with plain jane i'm gonna hate myself for it later face on cover or typography on cover typography i just think it looks more clean i'm more likely to pick up a book sometimes the faces can go a little weird or sometimes they can look a little like romancy I hate those covers. Um, so yeah, typography. Villain turn villain turning good, good guy turning bad. Um, villain turning good, except for like one spot of time, like really ran with this. They were just like, and you are good, and you are good, and you are good. But personally, I like it when the good guy or when the bad guys turn a little good. I feel like it is more understandable when the good guys have a little bit of badness in them. But it just it's a downer for me. Of like they were so happy and now they're sad because they're evil. I'd rather them just be happy all the time. So I like it when there's the redeeming factor of the person who is evil for whatever reasons and they find their way back to the side of good. So yeah, I'm a sucker for a Disney movie. And that is it. Hopefully you guys agree with some of my picks. If you don't, comment down below. I would love to know exactly which one you guys would choose. Um, again, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And please, please, please hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post. I really enjoy doing this tag. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. Thank you so, so much again. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.